Tag zusammen zu einer neuen Ausgabe von Klima und Kohle, dem Campus Talk. Heute wieder zusammen mit Christian Kamlott. Tag Christian. Hallo Henrik. Wir haben heute wieder eine Sonderfolge. Die Idee war ja, jeden fünften Termin im Monat äh, zu nutzen, um eine Sonderfolge zu machen. Und eine Idee, die ja schon länger existiert, ist, dass wir mal eine Folge machen zum Thema Internationalisierung an Hochschulen, Gewinnung von internationalen Fachkräften. And I think this is a very good idea to do this in English and not in German. So, let's start again. Welcome, Christian. Hi, Henrik. Nice to meet you here. Yeah, so we are, uh, well, I think we have a track record at our university in, in Birkenfeld uh, with international students. You are the head of our bachelor degree program, Sustainable Business and Technology. So you have a long experience in acquiring young people to join our university, to join the German job market, to face the shortage of skilled workers uh, in Germany. Uh, let's start with a Brief introduction. Why did you start this bachelor degree program? What is the idea? What is the concept of this program? Okay, let us go one step back, Henrik, because of um, SBT wasn't really the start of that idea. Um, the true That's start is already, I think it's now 13 years ago, um, when I was... Um, uh, quite fresh at university and um, I was in some meeting um, I, I think it was a meeting on internationalization processes or so, something like this and um, everybody was quite sad ah our share of internationals is so low what can we do about um, and I was more or less in the beginning a visitor to this and mm -hmm. was asking myself Okay, so it's not really surprising me because all we offer is German language courses. So for me, it was not so surprising um, mm -hmm. that um, we have not many international students around because it's quite hard. Even if you learn German at school, being in Scandinavia, being in the US or wherever, um, to follow a German university lecture in German language. That's nearly impossible because German is, as we all know, a quite complex language. So, and so I suggested, okay, so why don't we introduce a one semester exchange program, which is taught completely in English? And this is what is still existing today as our lead exchange program, which is a study semester. And um, we started this. In 2010, it was. And um, this developed greatly. Um, we invited each year 20 students from our partner universities worldwide to come here to do a one semester course on sustainable business. So um, uh, we, uh, and, and no, no, it was not only business, it was already um, a pinch of engineering in there. Um, mm -hmm. And this was a great success over years. Um, and it started in the summer term. Then two or three years later, we said, okay, um, uh, why don't we do this also in the winter term? Then we had the first students staying here, not only for six months, but for 12 months. And so it developed step by step. And then finally we said, okay, um, there were already the first students who approached us saying, hey guys, why don't you offer offer us the chance to study a whole bachelor program? And then this idea was born originally. Mm -hmm. And then we sat together at university and said, okay, let's design an international bachelor's program. And um, we started to put together the main pillars. And I think now I'm at this point um, where your question um, yeah. was, what are the main pillars what is the main idea of this program um, first of all it's an industrial engineer and wirtschaftsingenieurstudium mm -hmm. uh, we would say in german which is quite a german thing um uh, in, in not in many countries you can study such a mix of engineering and business things in one study program. But I think this is a quite important one um, because we, we try to train, to educate people um, to be able to work on the interchange of engineering knowledge, technical skills and so, and business knowledge, understanding cash flow and so. Yeah. Uh, 
And this was the basic idea of this program. It's fully taught in English. And um, this was my petitum, my personal petitum. I said, okay, if we as a German state university introduce such a program, there must be something coming with it for us as Germany, as German nation. Because mm -hmm. we all know one of the biggest challenges um, we are facing um, is a, short, a shortage of skilled workers um, tomorrow more than today even. Um, <clears throat> and so I said, okay, we have to train people and to motivate them to stay then in Germany. Um, well-educated, um, already been in touch with German culture, with our mindset here. Um, and so there is a third pillar next to business and engineering, which is culture. And um, language is the main thing um, uh, where we transport this, because I personally believe, and before we started this program to say this as well, um, we had many talks with medium-sized companies um, regarding uh, their wishes. What if, if, if you need, if you want to hire um, an international employee, what is your main concern? What do you want? And obviously, of course, they need a certain skill set, but everybody said, make sure that they can speak German. Mm, yes. Still today, um, even for a comparatively large mid-sized company, um, as long as the headquarter is in Germany, it is very difficult to cope with your job if you don't speak a word of German. And so we said, okay, we have to make them fit in German language. And so German language is in each of the six semesters an integral part of the study program. You can only pass this program and only get your bachelor's degree um, if you have at least a B2 level of German language. And this enables um, uh, those people to get integrated in Germany yep. to really find a job. And I'm quite proud because... One year ago, um, I discussed with our first batch, with um, uh, nearly every um, alumni we have from, from the very first year. And Henrik, guess how many of them still were in Germany one year ago? 90%. 100%. 100%. And that's, that's, that, that, that's great. That's great. And this is exactly what we wanted. Um, We, as the German state, as Germans, we pay this education, which is um, a big comparative advantage compared to other international studying options. If they study in the US, in UK, wherever, always they have to pay tuition fees and they don't yep. have to do that here. So it's very cheap and you get good quality education and you learn German and then you have the chance to get a job in Germany and to stay in Germany for good. And many of them want that. Um, and this, this is what I think is very important with this program. It's always already been copied from two universities in between, um, no, okay. which is a, basically a good sign. <laughs> I, think. Yeah, of all, I, I, I think so. That is very important. That we <laughs> yeah. um, and, For us, I, I mean, I can only uh, say this for myself, obviously, and I know from a handful uh, of colleagues who, say, who have the same meaning about that. And it's really great fun to work with them because those students are so motivated to be successful, to learn something. They are hungry. Um, I mean, they are not starving for food, but they are hungry for knowledge. That's why they are here and they take it all very serious. And my, on average, my impression is they take it more serious as the Germans um, that we have here. Because still, for somebody coming from Bangladesh, from India, from Africa, from wherever, um, it's still, of course, comparatively expensive to live in Germany, yeah. living, food, everything. Um, and um, I think on average, um, they are from, 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 they are well, the families are quite well off com in, in their home countries. Yeah. Um, and so they really want to be successful and they, they want to speed up their studies. 
um, and um, they are performing quite well. It's great fun to work with them. And when, as I said, I saw that 100% of them are still in Germany doing a master's program or having a job, I think this is the best um, what we could have wished when starting this program. Yes, yes, of course. What I personally appreciate um, working with the international students on the bachelor level or on the other uh, hand uh, on the master level is uh, the discussion, the exchange with the students, with their perspective from their home country. Because if you discuss uh, the energy transition, uh, energy vendor or climate change issues, You have always this German view or the European view with the German mm -hmm. students. Mm -hmm. And what is very, very helpful is that you have these perspectives from Asia, from Absolutely. North or South America, because they have a totally different view. They are, have a, they come from developing countries or even from poor countries. If they came from, I don't know, Cameroon, Nigeria, these emerging countries at the beginning of their industrial process with issues we never have uh, seen or experienced in the last 100 years. So the students, the German students do not know these issues. And I think this exchange uh, on the uh, scientific level, on the one hand, is very, very important. And also to improve your personal perspective about foreign countries uh, outside of the European, uh, let's say, the, the European culture, although we have uh, different cultures in Europe. But I think if you get in contact with uh, students from India, from even from the US, who have a total different mindset, what they do, how they act, it's very, very interesting. And I appreciate this. I One quick example, uh, I have a, a game I play with the master students about climate change. So a simulation game, uh, the groups uh, are one party on a global, in a global game. They need to develop their country in this game um, and they all will emit greenhouse gases. And the, the goal of this game is, uh, on the one hand, or You win the game if you are the highest developed country. Mm -hmm. But all players in this game contribute to climate change. And the idea is that after a couple of rounds uh, played in the game, they need to see, oh, there's climate change and the climate change reduces my industrial capacity. So the main idea of this game. And what you can observe is that the different international groups, I do not mix the groups, the students stay in their home country group. They act totally different. <laughs> uh, the, the, the Germans act normally very green and sustainable to say, oh, let's save the planet. And for example, the US uh, students very often are just focused on the economic uh, mm -hmm. profit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, very funny. And then if you, after the game, start to discuss why have you made this de decision in the game uh, do, to, to reflect what they did and what had happened, because in 95% of the game, the planet is dead. <laughs> 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 we, we were facing climate change. We discussed climate change uh, in the previous uh, lectures, and then we play this game. So the students know, okay, we need to save the planet. And if they act as a politician, they destroy the planet every Single <laughs> game. Ah, but in, in different ways. And that is very interesting to see how the students act from their previous education in their home countries. And this is so interesting and so helpful to reflect on your personal perspective. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I, I experience very similar things because I, I try always um, to mix courses. Um, I offer courses that are exclusively um, for foreigners, for them to integrate with each other, especially for, the, for, for, for those who are only here for a semester in exchange or so. Um, and other courses, and in general, of course, every course is open for everybody, but other courses are designed to mix groups where I invite German students and for them it's an elective. And at the same time, I invite international students and um, the subject being elective for them as well um, mm -hmm. and um, experience the same. 
very nice, enriching discussions because of their very different perspectives. So I totally agree. Um, uh, that's enriching in many different facets, even on our campus life. Um, um, it's, it's so good to see what, what our, what the students organize by themselves. They, they have this international breakfast or they introduce their home countries, bringing their home food and um, playing their home music. Um, all this helps to make our society a bit more colorful because this is exactly what we see when we go in the street. I studied some 20 years ago in Mannheim. Um, and Mannheim always has been a, a, a city with high levels of migration. And this is even, has even improved or has been, has been, has developed stronger under today. If I go to Mannheim, I see it even more than 20 years ago. And I think this is what happens with our society. And if you start bringing the nations and the different cultures together already at university, um, that that's a logical step in this process. Um, and um, even with our admin at university, it is doing something. I remember in the very beginning, this was quite a hurdle um, because everybody has to change, even um, in, in, in the student's office and so on. And now yeah. I see that, in general, um, communication at university is bilingual. So if there are emails addressed to all students, to all staff, to all I don't know what, um, you know, those mass emails um, yeah. that, uh, um, th th that come day by day, they are bilingual nowadays. This was a process. Yeah, of course. Getting this done. Um, and, but I think this is a very good process um, because we have to cope with that problem. Um, you said that in another podcast, um, uh, there are retiring one and a half pe million people in Germany year over year, and only one million um, is growing up being the next generation. So there's a gap. And the only chance for us to fill this gap is migration. Yes, of course. Easier. I think that is, you're completely right. We need to find um, young people um, from outside of Europe, yeah. uh, from Germany, of course, and of Europe, uh, and integrate them through the German yeah. job market because we don't have these kids in Germany yeah. that can fill this gap. Uh, so the industry must have a very, very big interest in Getting international people to Germany, we have had this in the past, 1960s, the, the people from Turkey, mm -hmm. from Italy, working in the German coal mines. Of course, low-level workers, mm -hmm. hard work. Um, we, we have seen this in the automotive sector in the 1960s, 1970s in Germany. So, of course, this, and this was uh, an idea of the government and not uh, coming from the universities. That was... Uh, triggered by the uh, by the industry and actually i don't see this movement or these ideas uh, at the moment all people the press the media the government says oh we have a gap and we need uh, skilled workers but i don't see that in germany we welcome people that yeah. they can join our job market so yeah. what we need to do as a university in Birkenfeld and all universities in, in Germany, we need to prepare the young people for the German job market. Absolutely. That they can also be a bridge to their home country. Again, a very nice idea for the for the uh, small and medium uh, enterprises we have, in particular in, in close to the university's location, that this might be a chance to have a contact to an international market that you can say, okay, I have a some employee from India who has studied in Germany, knows the German yeah. language and the German culture and is a bridging person to India, India. To, to step into this market. What a brilliant idea. And to be honest, I don't see that the industry hops onto this train and says, let's do this and force this. Yeah, I don't see this. Again, also, this is a process and I feel it's getting better. Um, yeah. And, um, 
And I already, as an example, um, we, we uh, mentioned our student project um, several times already. Um, and also in, in the uh, SBT program, um, I integrated um, such a, a project module. And last semester, I did such a project with international students um, uh, with a consultancy company. Um, mm -hmm. The whole project was in English and the consultancy company um, um, headquartered in, in Luxembourg. Um, th th for them, it's normal. Uh, all the business language is English. And yep. um, they are already a step further in this process. And I think many German companies will follow because there is no choice. <laughs> yep. Yeah, of, of, of course. We need to, we have to. Yeah. Uh, and this is um, very important. Um, on the other hand, of course, what you need to ensure is that you have a diverse group, that you have students from the whole world yeah. and not try to concentrate on one or two single yeah. countries uh, because you have always this clash of cultures. Yeah. Uh, the German culture, the European culture differs from the Chinese or Japanese culture totally. Yeah. And... Uh, This is very important, even for the German students, uh, that they get in contact uh, and that they even start to watch football together. Uh, <laughs> th that's not working uh, because even the German students are not interested in football at our <laughs> university, unfortunately. But this is so interesting uh, to open your mind. And uh, yeah, it's... It's getting better, you're right. But I think, on the other hand, uh, even on the, uh, the the professors at our university, there are a lot of professors which at the moment don't have a big interest in doing English lectures because yeah, it's course. different uh, to do a German lecture. You need to prepare all the slides, all the content. Uh, you need to do a lot of work to prepare your lecture in English instead of German. Their knowledge of the English English language isn't Perhaps yeah. that good. Yeah, mediocre oh, sometimes. Yeah. Uh, and that is, of course, a problem that the pool of professors or lecturers who could uh, offer an English course is not that large. And that is, of course, also very important for the universities that you get new professors which are able to do international lectures and not only the German lectures. But also this is a process, as, as, as we both know. Um, if... If we hire a new professor um, in the in the process, um, um, where they have to introduce themselves and 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 give test lectures and all that stuff, um, we normally these days um, integrate English um, and yep. they have, have to lecture in German and in English at the same time. And if they do not perform in English, we don't hire them. Um, yep. So. So, so, but also this is a process, obviously. And another important thing in that context, um, it's not all nice and shiny. Um, of course, um, internationalization and more migration and culture comes up with cultural clashes as well. Um, so we have problems nowadays sometimes that we didn't know before. Um, so there sometimes There is something like sexual harassment, which um, which results from just a very different understanding between the relation between men and women we have yep. here in Germany and Europe. And there are countries where this relationship is treated a bit differently. And not every um, student, um, I'm talking about male students uh, coming here, um, have really incorporated... <laughs> our cultural understanding of that. So this causes problems. And sometimes, but this is more a funny thing, what I experience, um, many of them um, see education or university staff as a service provider. Yeah, uh, They come here um, and they think, okay, um, their service is education and you, professor, have to make sure that I learn. Yeah, And maybe in their systems, in their educational systems in their home countries, that might be the case, especially 
Some of them come from the private educational system in, in their countries. And yep. maybe this is the spirit over there, but it's not at the German state university. And um, then I explained them, mm -mm, no, <laughs> this is not how it works here. This is your thing. It's your job to perform. And if you don't perform, we will ex you automatically one day. So make sure you learn, you're good, um, and you follow up. Um, so this is also a different culture, different understanding. Yeah. And, and even, even funny things like, um, I remember a situation which was in the first second, not so funny, but now looking back and it was not a real problem. It was funny. Um, there was one student, um, <clears throat> leasing a student flat and, mm -hmm. um, it was designed for one student. So in Germany, normally one student would live there. Yeah. He said, okay, still quite expensive. Why, why don't share this flat? Then we share euros as well. Yeah. And in the end, seven students lived <laughs> in this flat. And of course, this was a big mess in this, um, uh, in this dorm. Um, and, um, no one wanted to accept it. And there was like a tiny revolution from the others. Um, but for them, it was normal. I think no normal German student would share his single uh, bedroom flat with six yeah. other students. Uh, th this would be no option, I guess, but it was quite a normal thing for them. <laughs> so, yeah. so things like this happen. Um, but all this is part of migration, of cultural change, of getting more colorful. Um, and I see it very positively. It's a process that we are in. We have to learn to cope with it. We don't have to accept everything, obviously. Of course not. Um, but um, it's a big chance for us as well to, to, to further develop our own culture. Yeah. And another good example that I know, um, there was a South African student, very motivated, very good. Um, uh, and, um, uh, he, and I said, okay, why, why are you here from South Africa coming to Germany? And he said, in South Africa, um, um, being white and um, not so privileged family wise, it's quite difficult these days to develop and to make a good career because uh, they, they are in this process um, uh, trying to solve um, the, the black and white problem down there. Mm. Um, and he said, my chances are much better here. And, you know, if you want to name it like this, I'm a refugee. I'm yeah. a refugee coming to Germany, um, willing um, to build my and my family's future here in Germany because I, I don't see a good future for me and myself, uh, for, for me and my family um, down there in South Africa. So it's very, you learn a lot. Um, you get another picture on the earth sometimes. Um, and you have the chance to, to work with very motivated people. And in the end, I believe um, we are contributing something for our country as well. And yeah. I come back to that. I think, A main thing is learn German, um, force them to learn German, because otherwise it might happen that you have a study bubble here. People yeah. from all, all over the world coming here to Germany, studying something all in English, living in their English community, and then leaving Germany for, 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 for a job opportunity somewhere, which they, which is in English again. So this is not a good investment for us because we, we have them here, we educate them and then we leave them. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's right. And I think an, an, another aspect is very important that the German students are forced to do lectures and to work on their topics in English. Yeah. Uh, that, that is something I'm facing in the bachelor degree program, Renewable Energy. Um, we have this uh, lecture, Solar Energy, so about photovoltaics. And this is, although the, the program is in German, this course was designed in English uh, to say you have a technical uh, lecture, which is important for the education. Um, this is done in English. And what I observe in the last years, uh, 
you have courses which are very, very good. A uh, lot of students which are can follow my the lectures can discuss in English, but I have also had uh, years uh, I, I was able to do the, the the lecture in English, but the discussion has to be done in German. Otherwise, I wouldn't have got any answer. Yeah, and that is of course the wrong way. This semester, I forced the students. To discuss, I have a big international uh, group this year in this course, so that is very, very interesting. Um, I, I've made a, um, a case study, inspired by you, of course, uh, about the question, should we get the solar module manufacturing capacities back to Europe or shall we leave it in, in China? So I split the students cool. in, uh, in, in, <laughs> in peer groups. And of course, I had some groups just with German students, but also with international students. And that was very interesting to observe the students in their discussion, uh, in their peer group role, pro China, pro Europe, uh, pro sustainability without any uh, idea is Europe or China better. And that was so interesting for the students that I think they learned so much about discussion culture, mm -hmm. discussing in English with their limitations in language knowledge of course mm -hmm. because they are not fluent in english <laughs> this doesn't matter at all yeah you, you, and you will yeah. see this in the job later on to be honest i haven't had any lectures in english in my uh, um during my stay in aachen at the university although of course the scientific language is english but the the language in the uh, lectures was always german Uh, even during my time, uh, my PhD time in Bochum was in German because we don't have had a lot of uh, international PhD students uh, in our lab or the, in, in our group. Uh, so the start of talking in English was in the job and then you need to perform. There was no question, oh, Mr. Thiessen, are you able to go to Italy and do some communication with our guys in Italy to solve a problem over there? And if you say no, then you say, okay, no problem. Here's the door. Please leave the, co the company. We, we yeah. have no use for you. Yeah. And if you need to discuss contracts, technical issues in contracts with people from Italy, from Spain, from Japan on an, in a company – You need to perform and you need to be fit very, very fast. And it's very helpful if you have had this situation before doing your stay at the university, because then you are prepared. You have seen the situation and you are, are more or less familiar with this. Mm -hmm. That is uh, very important that the, even the German students Absolutely. are more open-minded. To be honest, I don't know how good the quality of the English, of the knowledge of the English language is in Germany. If you are in Munich or Cologne, for example, I think this might be good that the bus driver, the taxi driver speaks English, but the, let's call them in, in quotes, the normal people, um, they don't need English compared to the Dutch or the Scandinavian people who have only TV movies in yeah, English sure. with, with their subtitles. That is so easy, so helpful to learn English within weeks, to be yeah. honest. Watch your favorite series, hear your favorite podcast, even this podcast in English, and you will learn the language within weeks and months. Perfect. Yeah. So I think we... We yeah, made we it. I think we, we, we I think we, we talked about all the issues. Uh, I, I hope all the uh, English native speaker uh, are still online and <laughs> haven't switched off due to our mistakes. What, what in language Germany. are those guys speaking? <laughs> yeah, that is. Uh, but I think it it was for the for the German. It it, it was quite well. So <laughs> thank you, uh, Christian, for joining me on this uh, special episode. Uh, have a nice day and we meet together next time. Then again in German. But I think it wasn't the last time that we discussed uh, in this podcast in English. So no, thank you very much, Christian. No. Thank See you, Henrik. See you soon. In der nächsten Woche geht es dann weiter mit einer regulären Folge auf Deutsch. Wir werden uns in der zweiten Folge unserer kleinen Reihe zum Klimawandel mit der Physik hinter dem Klimawandel beschäftigen. Wie funktioniert der Treibhauseffekt? Welche Einflussgrößen haben wir? 
und ähm, ja, diskutieren mal, wie weit man oder wie tief man in dieses Thema einsteigen kann, ohne jetzt äh, ein Physikstudium absolviert haben zu müssen. Das klappt eigentlich ganz gut, um so die Grundlagen des Klimawandels verstehen zu können. Vielen Dank fürs Zuhören dieser Sonderfolge auf Englisch. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Musik